Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today we're going to be talking about your favorite books of the year so far. So back in the very end of July, I think like July 31st, I put a poll or not a poll, a question box thing up on my Instagram story and asked y'all what your favorite books are of the year so far. And we're going to talk about them today. I'm going to learn about these books. You're going to learn about these books and see what other people's favorites are. And hopefully you can get some recommendations. Hopefully I can get some recommendations. So let's dive into these. The first submission that I have is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. This looks like it's a young adult book. So this is about Evangeline Fox who has believed in true love and happy endings until she learns that the love of her life will marry another. Desperate to stop the wedding and to heal her wounded heart, Evangeline strikes a deal with a charismatic but wicked Prince of Hearts. Ooh, okay, you have like a villainous character love interest. In exchange for his help, he asks for three kisses to be given at the time and place of his choosing. Ooh. But after Evangeline's first promise kiss, she learns that bargaining with an immortal is a dangerous game and that the Prince of Hearts wants far more than what she's pledged. He has plans for Evangeline, plans that will either end in the greatest happily ever after or the most exquisite tragedy. Ooh, this says this also is the first book in the series. That actually sounds pretty good. That does sound really good. I've never read a Stephanie Garber book. I've heard good things about her books. I actually like wouldn't like discount this book just because it's YA. Like it sounds pretty good. Like I still read YA every now and then. And so I think books like these that sound really good like this, like are ones that I would pick up. Next I have Hail Mary by Candy Steiner. I've heard really good things about this one and this series as a whole. I've been really wanting to get into them. I don't think there are audiobooks yet. Let me know, please correct me if I'm wrong. But when the audiobooks come out, I'll, I'll read them. I'll do it, I'll do it. Um, and I know this one, it's kind of like a second chance thing where the hero and the heroine like met online gaming and they became like best friends but uh the hero doesn't know that the heroine like goes to the same school as him i think they're in high school at this point and when she tells him like in person he like isn't the nicest to her i think and then it jumps years later when they're in college and they live next door to each other and the hero doesn't recognize the heroine at all and they live next door and I think something's happening at her house and he offers her a place to, st place to stay um, while they're fixing up her house or something. And I think he has a crush on her, but he doesn't know that that's the same girl as he was friends with in high school. Sounds a little complicated, but I've also heard just really good things about it. And Candy Steiner, like, yes. Next I have Five Survived by Holly Jackson. So it looks like this is a young adult thriller. So this is about 18 year old Red and her friends who are on a road trip in an RV heading to the beach for spring break. But then the RV breaks down in the middle of nowhere where there's no phone reception and nobody around to help. Yeah, that sounds creepy. Yeah, I don't read creepy books. I don't read thrillers and mysteries because <laughs> I'm a skitty cat. So, um, but if that suits your fancy, someone really loved this book. Ooh, next. I totally agree. I don't know, Live by Hannah Bonham Young. It's my favorite book of the year. So I know Caitlin submitted this one. I love you, girl. We love this book. This is a surprise baby romance with characters who have disabilities and it's absolutely beautiful. It is a beautiful book. Um, if you like high angst books and you need that angst in your stories, your romance stories, don't pick this one up. Like there's no third act breakup. They're very communicative and like it's, it's, it's perfect to me. <laughs> It's perfect. I don't care about angst or things going on. Like if I love the characters, the story's perfect. So that's the way I feel about this book. And I totally agree that this book is like one of the best books of the entire year, is the best book of the year for me at least. Next I have The Rest of the Story by Tal Bauer. I've heard really good things about Tal Bauer, um, specifically from uh, Robin from Paperbacks and Planners. So like this looks good and it's like a hockey romance. So I don't know who the summary is in the point of view of, but whoever this hero is gets traded to the absolute worst team in the NHL, the national hockey team, the Rocky Mountain Outlaws. He's expected to step up and lead the team, which is every kind of bad idea you can imagine because he is a head down, mind his own business kind of guy. Mr. Uninvolved, Mr. No, not me, Mr. Find someone else. But these players have been through a mess of hell and someone thinks that he can pull them together. But then he meets his co-captain, Shay Darling, who is way off limits. And they just fall like head over heels for each other. I love that. I love that. Give me that. I want to read that now, please. And it looks like it's a standalone. Next I have Maestro, Maestro by Auden Dar. Um, I've heard a few of my friends like talk about this book recently. 
and I all I know is that it's really really long and it starts out when like the characters are like 13 or something and I guess it's a friends to lovers romance that um spans decades and continents it's about Chad and Aurelia so it looks like Chad nowadays when they're older I think they may be like bump into each other again after their like romance when they're younger. Um, he is now a, a tattooed virtuoso and the James Dean of classical music and Aurelia is an accomplished cellist who is his muse. That sounds pretty good to me. Next someone said the Boys of Tommen uh, duet series by Chloe Walsh. Um, they said Binding 13 and Keeping 13. I've heard like all my friends talk about this series, all about these books. Um, I don't know, something about the covers just like turned me off for some reason, but I know that they're getting new covers and they're also really long and really long books intimidate me. <laughs> so um, I don't really know anything about this, but I think the first two books in the series are like about the same couple and it's apparently like a sports new adult romance as well. This summary is like five pages long. Oh my word. Anyway, it's about Johnny apparently. And I think Shannon, right? Shannon, Shannon and Johnny, and he plays rugby. And that's all I really know. And I think it takes place in college. I've heard good things. So um, if I get the audios, I don't know if they're on audio, but if they're on audio, you might see me reading them. Next, I have The Duke It's Even by Joanna Shoup. I haven't read this series yet by Joanna Shoup. I love Joanna Shoup's books, um, but the this is the fourth book, I think, in the Fifth Avenue Rebels series. And I know Rachel, Rachel submitted this one and the next one. Um, and she loves this series, loves this book. We'll hype it up to the day she dies. I know her. And um, I don't even know what this one is about, but I'm also like in love with this cover. Like I wanna be this cover model so bad. This one's about Nellie Young and she wants to escape the shackles of marriage. So she purposefully ruins her reputation. And now she dictates herself a hedonist pleasures only like kissing a handsome stranger in the ocean under the moonlight. To save his estate, the proper Duke of Lockwood must marry the perfect bride, wealthy with an unblemished reputation. While in New York, he's the perfect gentleman and no one knows he's suppressing his darkest desires. The last thing he needs is another scandal, except Nellie sees through Lockwood's charade. Straight to the real man underneath, this uptight Duke is far more than he lets on and she can't resist him. Rachel and I have very similar tastes, so yeah. And she also loved The Bully by Sophie Lark. That's the other one she submitted. And I need to read this one, I know I do. Um, this one's about Dean and Kat, I'm pretty sure. And it's like giving Draco Malfoy vibes. And I know that people love that. Um, and it's the third book in the Kingmaker series by Miss Sophie Lark, but I'm gonna read the Underworld series like in its entirety before I do the um, Kingmaker. Sorry, there's like a hair, I think, <laughs> on my face. And I keep trying to get rid of it. Any whoozles. Um, <laughs> so this one, it does look really good. Like all my friends love this book, but I really want to, uh, read the Underworld series like as a whole before jumping into the Kingmaker books. Then is Grimm and Barrett by Juliet Cross. I've heard great things about Juliet Cross. I have not read a Juliet Cross book. I know, please do not crucify me. <laughs> I have not read one of her books yet. This is the sixth book in the Stay a Spell, Stay a Spell series. And I've heard fantastic things about this paranormal romance series, um, especially this one. It looks like this one's about Clara and Henry. I don't really want to know what this one is about because <laughs> I don't want to spoil myself for the series because I think a lot of these books like build off of each other. Like you meet maybe these characters in previous books in the series and you get to see them behind the scenes. I don't want to be spoiled for what happens between the two of them. So yeah, this one looks really good. This whole series looks really good. I just have to start all the way at book one. I know I have to do it. Someone wrote in You With A View by Jessica Joyce, which I've never heard about before, but this cover is really beautiful to me. Like I really like it. And it looks like it's a contemporary romance. Two weeks on the road, stuck in a car with your high school enemy. Ooh, okay. The high school enemy part sounds good. I don't prefer contemporary road trip romances. Give me road trip romance and a fantasy book in a um, historical book, but for some reason, like contemporaries, they're not my favorite. So hopefully this, maybe this book could change my mind. Um, so it's about Noelle, who is grieving the loss of her beloved grandmother when she discovers decades old photos and letters that hint to a forbidden love in her grand's past. Needing to know the full story, she creates a TikTok video appealing for information and it goes viral. Um, through her video, she manages to track down her grandmother's secret love, Paul, who offers to take her on the honeymoon road trip he and Graham land but never got to go on. Noelle jumps at the chance to make this one last connection with her grandmother. There's just one problem. Paul's grandson is Noelle's frustratingly handsome high school rival, Theo, and Theo has to come too. <laughs> 
Oh my goodness. This also kind of sounds women fiction, women's, women's fiction-y. Um, so let me know if it is or not, but that does sound pretty cute. It looks like it was like published by Berkeley. And a few of my friends have rated it like pretty well. So I'm gonna put it in my want to read for sure. Someone said The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. I love this one so much. It's like, I feel like one of the staple romance books if you are into contemporary romances and you haven't read this one yet, like you have to. It's, I think a great starter book for getting into the genre too. This one's about Kala and Jonah. Kala gets a phone call from her, uh, a friend of her dad saying that her dad is really sick. He lives in Alaska, she lives in Canada. And so she goes to stay with her dad. She's estranged from, um, to basically be with him and help him get better and everything. But then she ends up meeting Jonah who works at the airplane company that her dad owns and they don't really get off on the right foot. He judges her at first for being from the city and she thinks of him as this very judgy small town guy. There's a lot of angst and intrigue between the two of them and pent up tension for sure. But yeah, this one is definitely a staple in the romance genre. Someone also said Fourth Wing by Rebecca Yaros. <laughs> no surprise here. Like I expected this to be on this list. I have not read this one yet. Um, when it comes to fantasy romance books that are new releases that are very much hyped, I don't know. I keep putting them off. I love fantasy romances. I freaking love them. But for some reason, I'm more gravitated towards picking up backlist titles and then letting the hype die down for newer releases um, before I pick them up. I don't know. I'm scared of being disappointed or scared of being the one odd person out who doesn't like it. So I think I'm going to wait probably until at least the second book is out. But I've heard really good things about this one and about our heroine Violet and her having EDS, um, which is a chronic illness. That's like a sister condition to my own. So um, I'm really looking forward to reading about that, but I think I'm gonna wait for book two to be out possibly before I dive into this one. But a lot of people like love this book because it has something to do with like dragon riders. Like she's a dragon rider, which sounds like so cool. Who Desire in His Blood by Zoe Draven. I am literally going to be picking this one up this month. I'm gonna be buddy reading this one with Zay and Victoria because the audiobook just dropped and we've been wanting to read this book, but we want the audio out and um, it looks so good. It's an alien romance where the hero is like a vampire too. I think, I think he drinks blood or something like that. I don't know. I'm going into this book blind because I love Zoe Draven so much. And I just, I've heard amazing things about this book. I don't know what it's about. I don't want to know what it's about. I'm going to go in blind. And Zay and Victoria and I are going to have so much fun reading this book. I'm very excited if you could not tell. I feel like this is going to be like one of my favorite books of the year. And I'm so glad that someone else, like, it's like someone put this on their favorites of the year because that makes me feel even better. Next is Dad Can't Know by... Eva Marks. The title sounds a little bit, hmm, okay. <laughs> I'm gonna read the summary for this one. Okay, this says, Callum Reinhardt moved across the country two years ago. I was finally just over 18 when he left and cut ties with us, taking away with him the opportunity to tell him how I'd stopped thinking of him as Uncle Callum and start thinking of him as an older, wiser, sexy man. <laughs> but he's back now two years later and so much has changed. My mom abandoned us, my dad is an emotional mess, and Callum doesn't look at me like a kid anymore. He's as hungry for me as I am for him. We know it's forbidden, dirty, and intense. That's not enough to stop us though, even though we should not when it feels so good. All I can do now is keep it a secret as best as I can because there's one thing I know for my dad can never know. I mean, that sounds, that sounds hot. So <laughs> I'll, I'll definitely put that on my Kindle Unlimited, uh, TBR if it's on Kindle Unlimited, because like, Sounds, that sounds like a fun read. Next is The Witch Collector by Charissa, Carissa Weeks. I'm so sorry if I'm butchering that name. Um, it looks like this is a new adult fantasy romance. Reina Bloodgood has one desire, kill the Frost King and the Witch Collector who stole her sister. On collecting day, she means to exact murderous revenge, but a more sinister threat sets fire to her world. Rising from the ashes is the collector, Alexis Hibbolt the man she vowed to slay and the only person who can save her sister. Thrust into an age old story of ice, fire and ancient gods, Reyna must abandon vengeance and aid the witch collector in saving the Frost King or let their empire and her sister fall into enemies' hands. But the lines between good and evil blur and Reyna has more to lose than she imagined. What is she to do when the witch collector is no longer the villain who stole her sister, but the hero who's stealing her heart? Okay, that sounds good. Like, I wanna pick that up. I honestly, based on the cover, thought this was a YA book, but it's not, like, I don't think it is, right? Like, look, correct me if I'm wrong, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but this says new adult um, on Goodreads, but like, that sounds really good. Next is, do you wanna start a scandal by Tessa Dare? This one is really good. We read this one for our Summer of Tessa Dare read along. And it's the last book in the Castles Ever After series. 
um, which is a fun series about like heroines inheriting castles. And our hero and heroine here um, get caught in compromising position and the heroine doesn't want to get married at all. <laughs> her mom's trying to get her get, to get married and she's trying to figure out, um, cause they were put into compromised position because someone thought they heard them making noises behind this door, certain noises. And uh, they weren't, it was another couple. So the heroine is tasked to, like she wants to go find out who that actual couple is so they can basically clear their names so they don't have to get married because she doesn't think that this hero actually wants to marry her. But yeah, it's very funny and fun like many Tessa Dare books. So um, I love this one as well. I also love It Takes Two to Tumble by Cat Sebastian. I always tell people that this is basically Sound of Music, but it's MM and there's no music. <laughs> There's no singing. Um, so our hero in here, he is the town vicar and he finds out that the one of the estates in their village or their town um, has some very rambunctious children who are getting into a bunch of schemes. Their dad, their mom isn't around and he's tasked himself to rein these kids in and be a nanny of sorts to them or what's the male version of a governess? I don't know, you, you know what I'm saying. Um, and then the other hero who is the children's father comes back, he is a naval officer and um, it's about them falling in love with each other. So Sound of Music-esque for sure, just it's MM and um, there's no music. But yeah, this one's really fun. Like I really like this one. It gets emotional at times, um, but it's such a good read. It's so good. Then I have The Third Sons, A Charm by Shanna Galen. I think I own one of the books in this series, um, but it is the first book in the Survivor series by Shanna Galen. I have no idea what this is about. So let's read the summary. Oh my gosh, I see the word bodyguard. <gasps> If y'all know me, I'm a sucker for bodyguard romances. Ewan Moss Mostyn, Mostyn <laughs> thinks a job as a Duke's daughter's bodyguard will be easy, but Lady Lorraine has a few tricks up her sleeve to spark an undeniable passion. Just that tagline there. I'm hooked already, okay? Fiercely loyal to his friends and comrades, Ewan Mostyn is the toughest in a group of younger sons of nobility who met as soldiers and are now dying trying desperately to settle back into peaceful society. You entrust his brawn more than his brains, but when he's offered a job watching the Duke of Rilton, Riddleton's stubbornly independent daughter, he finds both are a challenge. Lady Lorraine wants none of her father's high-handed ways, and she'll do everything in her power to avoid her distressingly attractive bodyguard until she lands herself in real trouble. Lorraine begins to see Ewan's protectiveness in a new light, and she can only hope that her stoic guardian will do for her what he's always done, fight for what he wants. Yes, I want to read that. I've never heard of this before. I need it. I need it. I need it now. I need to go look for the audiobook like right now. Ooh, Lord of Scoundrels by Loretta Chase. I've heard great things about this book. I'm actually not going to read the summary for this one because I want to go in blind because I do want to read this book like soon. Um, and I already like know a few things about it. And um, I am in love with this cover. Like I love it so much. I own the other cover, which is stunning as well. But like this one, give me the clinch covers all day long. Um, but I know that a lot of people love this book, so I'm not surprised to see that someone submitted that one. Someone submitted The Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley. Um, I think this is a like thriller mystery book, um, which isn't really my thing again, um, but we can read the summary, see what's going on. It's a biracial unenrolled tribal member and the product of scandal Dauntis has never quite fit in, both in her hometown and on the nearby reservation. When her family is struck by tragedy, Donis puts her dreams on hold for her fragile mother. The only bright spot is meeting Jamie, the charming new recruit of her brother's hockey team. Ooh, okay, is there romance in here? After Dauntis witnesses a shocking murder that thrusts her into a criminal investigation, she agrees to go undercover. But the deceptions and deaths keep piling up and soon the threat strikes too close to home. How far will she go to protect her community if it means tearing apart the only world she's ever known. That does sound interesting. Um, let me know how big the romance plays a part in this book, because if it is a big part, who knows? Maybe I will pick it <laughs> Next is A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. I know who submitted this one and she has been hyping it up for so long. I've only read the first book in the series and she's been telling me I need to read the other books, but this is book three in the Cursebreaker series. The first book is A Curse So Dark and Lonely, where a heroine has cerebral palsy um, and she walks with a limp. And I really loved that representation, especially it being in a fantasy book. Like your heroine's in our world. This is YA, by the way, it's a YA series. Um, but she's in our world, but she gets sucked into this fantasy 
world um, where basically it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast in this fantasy world. But I've only read that one like years ago and I really liked it and I own the other one as well. So I, I know I need to continue on with the rest of these books. And the last one that I have is from Becky and she told me she loves Master of Storms by Beck McMaster. This is the fifth book in her Legends of Storm series. So I'm not gonna read the summary because it's the fifth book, but I love Beck McMaster. Um, she's written a few fantasy romance books and I definitely wanna read more of them. And um, this cover definitely intrigues me. And um, yeah, I really like this author and I think she's a very underhyped fantasy romance author that more people will need to pick up. Anyways, there you have it. Those were your favorite books so far for 2023. Let me know down below if you weren't able to make a comment on my Instagram what your favorite book is so far of the year. I would love to know. Um, mine so far is Out on a Limb, for sure. For freaking sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, let me know down below. Again, if you've read any of these books or if you plan to, and if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a sun emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.